I'm going to just very quickly share a little bit of a PowerPoint to introduce ourselves a tiny bit more and talk a bit about this session that we're doing today, which is planning the year ahead for a better tomorrow. And as Will said, these UN days that we see popping up all over the place, thinking ahead rather than just doing it last minute. Yes. Um, but before we continue, <laughs> this wonderful person next to me, as you can see, is Tamires. She likes stationery okay. and black Barbie dolls. She's from Brazil and she founded uh, Simplifica Inglés. And the other guy, do you know anything about um, him, Tamires? I don't think I know him. Yes, some, some people here in our audience, they might know Harry Waters. He's the one who loves hats and shirts. He has one for, you know, each and every occasion. He's from England and he founded such a beautiful project and company named Renewable English. Do you know him? I, I think I know me. Sometimes oh, I feel like probably. I do. Probably. <laughs> Uh, and today, obviously, there are hundreds of UN days, as you will have seen on the on the list of the, the calendar that you're going to receive. We're just going to talk about five, and they are World Tourism Day, International Day for Persons with Disabilities, World Wetlands Day, uh, International Women's Day, and World Earth Day. And as we can see, we have had 250 votes cast. Wow. Most of us knew about International Women's Day and Earth Day. Not many of us knew about World Wetlands Day. Um, Outrageous. Who would I'll not know come. <laughs> Disabilities Day and World Tourism Day, not so much either, but some. So there we go. We'll know more very, very soon. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. And before we begin, I know I'm talking too much already. It's outrageous. No, it's all right. <laughs> Thank you, Damiris. She always makes me feel good. She's brilliant. <laughs> First of all, we looked at World Tourism Day when Damiris and I were working on this. And we thought, yeah. how is that relevant to all of these different advancing futures ideas? And then we thought, actually, it's probably the most relevant out of all of these ideas. Because when you think about tourism, you know, you can't help but think about all of these different ideas. You, can, you know, there's culture, there's um, there's environment, there's equality, there's there's different diversity. There are so many different things that happen because of tourism, and we're going to look at just a few of those. So, is it okay if I start? I mean, it is. Be my guest, please. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So, firstly. When you get your, your calendar, you will see this. Mm, there we go. It's a resource which is on uh, advancing futures that's been created that's all about embracing a sustainable summer holiday. You can adapt it to any holiday, but I'm not going to talk about that today because that's yours. It's free. You can take it whenever you need it. What I'm going to talk about is my eco-adventure quest. I'm pretty curious. So what is this quest about? Well, I like to do this with my teenage learners usually. Um, and it's, you can either have it as a, a quick kind of 10 minute activity that you just drop in there, or you can have it as a bigger kind of project. So what I like to do, I put my students in pairs or groups, and then I flash up some pictures. And I'll say group one, you are team desert. Group two, you are team mountains. Group three, you are team rainforest. Group four, team beach. Group five, team city. Group six, team village. There we go. And I asked my students then with each of these different places to just create some different ideas on how you could have a sustainable adventure while you are there. For example, if you're in the mountains, number one, you obviously you take your reusable, refillable bottle. Um, if you see any plastic on the ground, you can pick it up. If you are in uh, a city, maybe you can travel there by train instead of plane. Maybe you can use the public transport while you're there. There are all these different ideas, but I like to ask my students to, to spend 10 or 15 minutes just thinking of them and listing them and how that can relate to, to having a more environmentally friendly holiday. I always talk about not forgetting your sustainable uh, practices at home when you go abroad. So 
that's my first idea that I like to do with, with teenagers and, and adults as well. So how about you, Tamides? What ideas do you have? Uh, before we get into my ideas, I love the way that you mentioned that we shouldn't just leave our sustainable practices at home because the world is our home, isn't it? Exactly. So whenever I tackle this topic with my students, I tell them that whenever we travel to another place, we should treat this place as it is our home, as you can see it here. So whenever we get into somebody else's home or in our own houses, we do have some rules we need to follow. Am I wrong, Harry? Do you have any rules in your house? There are rules. There are definitely oh, rules. tell us more about this that. Shoes off house. Shoes off house. So then it means that if I go to your house, I won't be allowed to wear my shoes. Exactly. No okay. shoes in the house, but make sure you've got clean socks on. Okay, I'll do. I'll do my best. <laughs> so then Harry, as I was mentioning, it is important to tell the students that we need to keep our practices, even if it's not our home, but then we should know how to behave and even what to do and what not to do. So thinking about that, I usually refer students or even teachers that take my training sessions to why not putting together a traveling manifesto with your students. This idea of activity can be suitable for young learners, but then of course we're going to grade the challenge. We might ask them which rules they would find necessary to visit somebody else's home and then if they're traveling abroad what they should do or not do they can put together posters or they can even take pictures or just have very quick rules for these learners they're going to be more aware of respecting this other home and if you were working with older learners you can even ask them to put together like a letter or even a manifesto they can do it collaboratively or they can involve other friends they can ask their family members solve some rooms so i guess that this might be a nice idea and if you're teaching adults you can also do the same with them because as adults we sometimes forget that we still have to follow some rules what do you think harry I love it. I love this idea of treating it as, you know, as somebody else's home when you go there to visit. And even for our students who who don't really have the opportunity to travel or, or the ability Absolutely. to travel, because, you know, it's not everybody has the financial means to do that. It's a wonderful way of of seeing other cultures, you know, learning about these other ideas, even if you're not going to visit this place, you know, you can learn about South Korea, for example, where it's very rude exactly. to show the soles of your feet. You know, that these cultural differences that we can learn about that can really help shape the, uh, our students into being global citizens, even if at the moment they don't have the means to visit these other countries. They need to be aware of these, these differences and these cultural sensitivities in other places. Absolutely. And then the same goes uh, if they go to a beach and then they see some litter. So aren't they responsible as well? So as you mentioned, we should keep our sustainable practice wherever we go. So I guess it's a very nice way for raising awareness and then providing students with this chance of learning about new cultures and for teachers as well, because we know that not all teachers have traveled so much. So for them, it is also another great opportunity for getting to know more about this country, culture, do's and don'ts. Exactly. Brilliant. So I think that's day one wrapped up and tied yes. off oh yeah. and you, you turned your camera off for a second there and i panicked i was like don't no don't no worries it was just a, a test if you were paying attention <laughs> always always so what's yes. the second day that it is that we're going to talk about hmm, i don't know harry maybe we should ask our audience do you recall our second day hmm. anyone remember let's see let's give them five seconds Okay, let's, let's give them six, just to be generous. Six. <laughs> oh, someone said wetlands, they're close. That's day three. Close. Pretty close. Hey. Oh, we do we have somebody here. Great guess. Yes, we have. Wow. 
they have a great memory. Oh, their memory is better than mine. <laughs> For sure, mine too. For sure, yes. Yes, yes. So then this leads us to December the 3rd, which is International Day of Persons with Disabilities. We know that we do have disabilities which are visible and others which are invisible. And then my idea might be helpful for you and your learners, either primary students, secondary students, and even adult learners, what would I like to share with you? A few years ago, my sister and I, uh, we needed to finish this school paper for her, and then she needed to take pictures about her surroundings. And one of the questions raised by her teachers was this one. Let me share. Yes. And the question was, is my surrounding inclusive? Mm. This was a big question because my sister, as a teenager, she didn't know how to answer to this question. So then the activity is asking teenagers or asking young learners to take pictures from their surroundings and assess if they're either accessible, inclusive, if somebody in a wheelchair would be able to access the park or even the square or even their school. So my sister got really shocked because we went through our neighborhood taking pictures of places that people would usually go to have some fun or to do something important. And most of our surroundings were not inclusive enough. So then with those pictures, they were able to put together some posters and raise awareness not only of the local community, but the teachers shared online. And then the neighbors, they got really, you know, curious because all teenagers, they were taking pictures from the square and the parks. So then it was pretty interesting, not only because it was something different for her to do, but also because she got to the conclusion that maybe the environment was not as inclusive as she thought it would be. Yes. Harry, what about your surroundings? Would you consider them inclusive? Well, that's a, it's it's funny you should say that actually because when we started preparing this session and we were talking about this, I decided, you know what, I'm actually going to have a quick look around, and the the number one place that isn't inclusive, absolutely isn't, is actually my house. Um, you know, there's a step at the front, and then there's a step to get in the front door, and then another step, and and we realised when my, you know, when my in laws came to visit, it was difficult for them to come in, so we had to think about different ways of making it more more accessible. And then I also thought about the park across the road from us. Again, there are small yeah. steps to get into the park. Um, and it just, it's really difficult. And, and today I even got to thinking about um, how about signage for people who are who are visually impaired as well. So Precisely. where are there signs for, for these kind of different, uh, these different uh, disabilities that perhaps mm -hmm. we don't really pay attention to and we don't really think of. So, so using this day, for me is a, a wonderful opportunity to highlight all of these these differences and um, and what you said um about the these teenagers coming together to campaign for these different ideas it it really struck a chord with me because i love it when teenagers start to use their voice mm -hmm. i love it when they come forward and, and they like to make a difference and you know when they go to school have a look around is it accessible for somebody in a wheelchair if it isn't what can you do about it? You know, raise awareness, raise money to make it wheelchair accessible. Um, what do you want to do and what can you do? The 3rd of December is a perfect day to start one of these campaigns. Exactly. And then um, my adult learners, they didn't know how to answer the question as well. So they started paying more attention to their office, to the building, and then maybe when they want to have happy hour meetings. So do they take that into consideration. So it was a nice question to be worked with older learners as well and some of my adult learners. Well, I even noticed with, some people may know, some people may not know, I'm tall. I was very good at growing. So I don't even think about like when something's up really high. So I, I put so many things on the top shelf in the cupboards that nobody else can reach. So like, again, I need to think about others when I'm putting things up you there do. or you only do. put the top <laughs> up there so only I can reach it. Mm, I see you. I see you, Harry. Shame on you. Shame on you, Harry. And <laughs> Harry, somebody has guessed correctly our third day. 
right? They have. I could see, yes. They guessed they... it before. It was the one that nobody knew about beforehand, but they did guess it before. So well done to them. And it is February the 2nd, World Wetland Day. Now, I'm not sure about you, Thamides, but wetlands are not something that usually jump to people's imagination or to no. people's minds. <laughs> Most people, in fact, don't really know what wetlands are which is fine. Um, basically, they are land which is wet. <laughs> sounds sounds self-explanatory, but things like um, swamps, things like marshes, where there is land, but it's also, there's also water. Um, and, and the reason I wanted to talk about this day is because not many people know about it. And the reason I wanted to bring these ideas in is to help raise that awareness with our students. Um, and before we do continue, I want to talk about some of the great things that wetlands do, you know, before people decide to build on them or we need a new shopping mall. So we'll just get rid of that swamp and turn it into a shopping mall. No, don't pave paradise and put up a parking lot. Keep the wetlands. They are great for carbon sequestration, which is carbon capture. So CO2 uh, is their fantastic ways of keeping CO2 locked in and not going out into the environment, not going into the atmosphere. Um, mangroves are particularly effective for this. They are a home to biodiversity. Um, if there's anyone in here who doesn't love otters, then I'm afraid, well, they're just amazing. Um, by the way, Joseph asked how tall I am. I'm 194 centimetres for Joseph, he asked. So about six foot three and a half for anyone else who's Wow, who's I'm one five six, so oh. I'm short. <laughs> a bit of a difference there. I'll tell you what, I can pass you the chocolate. A bog is indeed another one as well, Susanna. Um, they also are brilliant for water filtration, which is something we really do need. We need to make sure our water going into uh, different areas is clean. So going into rivers, going into the ocean, we need to make sure it's as clean as possible. So wetlands can do this. Um, but how can we make wetlands a fun thing to do? Well, there are lots of different types of wetlands, as I mentioned, here are a few of them and what they do. So introducing these to our students is a great idea. They can look at the different things that are there. They can look at the different animals that live there. And I love a story. I love a story. I do storytelling whenever I can. I'm, just love them. Me too. I love them all. <laughs> They're so good. They're such a, a great way to involve particularly young learners. Um, but but everybody loves a story, let's be honest. So I like to try and do these with my students as much as possible. I like to call it interactive story time. So rather than just being me telling a story, um, or Zainab's asked for the first day. Zainab, the first day was... Hmm, can anyone World. remember? Very good, I mean, as you put it in there. Sorry, I just saw I put it, it here. Isn't that a problem? <laughs> I've got so many things going on on my screen. Um, interactive story time is something that is not just students sitting and listening. They can move around, use a bit of TPR. They can do a drawing. And the one that I've done today is just a very quick story. I'm going to share it with you now. Don't worry, I'll turn my camera off so you don't have to look at this or listen to me. And we are going to have a listen to a quick story. I like to get my students the first time to close their eyes and listen, and the second time to draw some pictures, and then they can retell the story and find out, um, oh, sorry, TPI is total physical. So it's when you say, like you say cat, and then they make the action of a cat, or you say um, jump, and everybody jumps when they hear that word. My apologies, I always talk in TLAs, and that's a three letter abbreviation. Um, so anyway, I'm going to share this with you. I'll remember to share my sound um, and have a listen to this story and think about what you could, how you could use it in your classrooms. Again, you can use this video if you want. It's on YouTube. When you get your pack, you will get a handout. There will be a link to this video, so don't worry. But you can also use your own videos or whatever you want to use. So here we go. Here, it, can everybody see the screen? Excellent. So I'm going to turn myself off and you can listen to that guy. Hasn't got any hair. That bald guy over there. Where's his hat? Right then, I'm going to disappear and I'm going to press play. Close your eyes. Listen. Then draw what you hear. 
I went to the wetlands. What did I see? There were lots of lovely animals living wild and free. There were green trees around me. There was mud on the ground. But when I looked a little closer, I hated what I found. The habitat was dirty. It was full of trash to pick. We found lots of awful plastic. We even found a brick. In the end, we cleaned the wetlands and the birds were free to roam. With work and cooperation, we saved the animals home. So that very, very quick video, that one minute video, for me, it's a great way to introduce lots of new vocabulary. It can introduce the idea of rhyming couplets as well. Students can build their own. They can draw a picture. They can retell the story. And it's just a fun way of talking about wetlands. But pro tip, you can do it with anything, anything you want. It doesn't have to be that. So that's my that, that's how I love to do my interactive story times. Now, for, for older learners, maybe for teens and stuff like that, it's not as interesting to have a bearded guy telling them a story. Um, so what I like to do with them are get them to create hashtags and slogans and things that they can use to save wetlands in their area. So they can come up with different ideas. This is my daughter, for example, who's obsessed with picking up litter. Uh, you can find her uh, there with the one million litter pick. Uh, so these ideas that students, teens can come up with it's much quicker, it's much easier. And as I say, when they come up with a nice slogan to save their wetlands, they can get really like involved in it. And slogan, by the way, is a Celtic word that means war cry. So as we're all here learning about English, there you go, the etymology of the word slogan. So Thanks there we go. For sharing there. that. <laughs> there you go. There's a few wetlands uh, ideas. Um, do you have any questions, Damides, or anybody, to be honest? Well, I do, Harry. Um, so then do you usually use a recording when you deal with your students? That is a great question. Um, it's up to you, really. Uh, I like to use recordings because it, it can have that kind of aside thing. It takes it away from, from being the lesson to being something special. But I also tell stories. I come up with stories on the spot. I, you know, I like to, I like to use different voices, too. So, you know, it sounds <laughs> kind of cool. Uh, but something else I love doing is is getting my getting my friends to to send voice notes and voice messages and getting my friends to read stories from from different countries uh, from different places because the exposure to different accents again helps our students be culturally sensitive and it helps us get our ears ready and it helps us understand that you don't have to have this kind of accent to be good at speaking English. You can have any accent and it shows your personality. Um, Absolutely. There you go. Well, we, we've got an interesting question here. Uh, is it okay if I use videos daily to improve my student skills? Why not? Right, Harry? I don't see why not. I mean, as long yeah. as you're not going in there and just walking in and saying, okay, today's lesson is, bam, an hour, Game of Thrones, and then sitting back and, and relaxing. <laughs> Maybe not. But yeah, using videos, it's it's a great way to, to grab students' attention, particularly with the, you know, a modern obsession with TikTok and Reels and these kind of things. So yeah. I think it's a, a great way to, to get involved. Absolutely, absolutely. I love the idea, Harrison. You inspired me so much. So maybe I'll give it a try to the wetlands with all of my teenagers and uh, even my adult learners. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Save the date. <laughs> Save the date. Yeah. All right. All right. And Harry, what's next? Hmm. I wonder if anyone knows. For me, I'm going to say this is right at the top of my list of most important days. And Demetra has already said it. This is right yeah. up there as list for important days. Yeah. Um, are they yes. right? Yes. They're absolutely right. And there's something you'd like to share. So I'm going to share a picture. Let's see if our audience is, you know, quite familiarized with that. Do you know what this picture here is about? Let's give them some seconds. 
Wow. Yes. So they're really sharp. Yes. Yes, Tatiana, you are right, Tatiana. It is the first woman to compete in a race. And Harry, do you know about her? I, I know a little, but mostly because you mm. told me. But I did see I... an article about her a while back. Can you tell us more? <laughs> Absolutely. Do you know where this uh, race was taking place? I think it was in... Are we asking the audience or are you asking me? Uh, everyone, everyone. Uh, Somebody said America. There you go. Um, Others. It, I believe it. They, look, someone knows it. Brilliant. Someone's yes. popped in the answer. That's amazing. Some of them. Some say it was in Boston. Yes. Do you know how long ago it was? Can you guess? Let's see if they can guess here. 60 years ago. Some of them say 60. Long time ago. <laughs> 50. Actually, it was in 1967. And I'd like you to meet Catherine Switzer. She was the first woman to officially run Boston Marathon. And why am I telling you this? Catherine, she didn't have a very good day. Actually, she says that there were mixed feelings on that very day because she was really happy to participate, but at the same time, she was really worried. What happened? She wanted to run Boston Marathon, and then she asked her coach. Actually, she met somebody to be her coach, and then he said that she wouldn't be able to run because back then they used to believe that women wouldn't have, you know, the biological features in order to compete or to have, the, you know, this stamina to finish a race. And then he told her, Catherine, you need to prove me wrong. And that's what she did. She was able to run. And then he said, all right, I'm going to coach you. Well, she just subscribed for this marathon. And then she asked him, do you think there's a problem if I join the marathon? And then he said, well, let me check the guidelines. And nothing about women being banished or being, you know, gotten out from the race. But then she said, well, I might run because nothing is here to prevent me from doing so. Then the day came. She wanted to wear shorts and a very nice top, but it was cold. As you can see, she was wearing her sweatsuit. And then when she was there, the race started. She was really calm because nobody, you know, said that she couldn't be there. But down went all of the runners into a very important spot of the race and somebody tried to stop her from running. She said that she could hear the sounds of somebody just, you know, trying to chase her. And then this is the picture. This is the iconic picture. The organizer didn't want her to participate because she was a girl. And then her participation called the attention of the media back then and it was game changing. So then Catherine, she opened doors for other women to participate and join other marathons. And Harry, um, why do you think it is important for us to tell our students about these shocking facts about women being, you know, prohibited or banned from sports? I think it's so important that, that they can learn about the way things are slowly changing. I mean, I remember in the in the UK, it wasn't until the 1970s that women were allowed to play football. Um, and I've got another ridiculous fact that I'm going to put in the chat there that there are still today in 2023, 23 male only golf courses that exist oh, in the USA. True. We talked ridiculous. about that. Um, it is, it is. And then there's something that I do with my learners to raise awareness. Um, I usually share some shocking facts. And then I test them. I'm going to do the same with you right now. Let me know if you can see the picture. Yes. So would you be able to answer to this question? What do you think it is the correct alternative? Let's see. A real blend of answers, but a lot. Yeah. Got a lot of A's, a few C's, a couple of B's, mm. mostly A's. 
Yes, some of our participants are saying that they cannot see it. Let me make it a bit bigger, just a second. Can you all see it now? Is it better this way? I guess it is. All right. Yes, Harry, I'm so sorry to share that with you. Unfortunately, the correct alternative is A. So 130 million girls remain now out of school worldwide. And whenever I share this with my learners, even younger ones, teenagers and adults, they get shocked. So then what do I usually do? I usually provide my learners with some sources and then they create some questions in a format of a quiz to test their colleagues and also by checking the answers they can either react to that and by getting shocked I guess it is the best way for us to raise awareness and then they usually test their family members their colleagues and I usually ask them so what can we do in order to make this world that we live in a bit more inclusive. And then inside my classroom, another practice that I usually have is assigning different roles to my students. So for instance, whenever they are talking or when they are participating in collaborative work, they are assigned roles such as teacher's assistant, secretary, and the spokesperson or the leader of the group who needs to delegate. And as an educator, I usually observe how these learners participate. I can notice that some boys, they don't want to pick up the secretary role because some of them say it is too female for their liking. So yes, Harry, yes, it happens, it happens. So I usually encourage learners to take up different roles because as educators, many a times, we sometimes do not pay attention to that. What about girls who, didn't want, who do not want to take the lead because they feel intimidated? So by providing some roles and assigning different roles, whenever I can, I make my classroom more inclusive. I usually do this with my adult learners as well, because inside the classes, we should also... We shouldn't rely on the fact that adult learners, they are going to be as inclusive as we expect them to be. So it is pretty important to tackle this topic at any age level. Do you try to do the same, Harry? How do you go about that? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, we recently saw here in Spain, anyone who saw the, the, World, the World Cup the other day, a couple of weeks back, the horrific uh, thing that passed afterwards when the head of the FA forced himself on one of the players. And, you know, this is here in Spain, you know, an apparently developed country in 2023, where, you know, ideas are supposed to be forward thinking and so on. And you see that it's ingrained throughout society. So I try and bring it up in as many classes as possible uh, and to make sure that, you know, my students are aware of it. But there's something else that that really kind of, I don't know, winds me up. Um, and I, I noticed it when I was working at a, a school a few a few years back, back in 2016. And, and it was when other like fully grown up teachers, well educated people um, would say like about feminism, basically, and feminism, mm -hmm. like thinking as the opposite of of chauvinism and the opposite of misogyny. And they're like, oh, it's just feminism. And it's like, guys. Feminism is actually just about equality. It's not about exactly. destroying all men and crushing mm -hmm. all men. And the fact is, they didn't realize that it was possible that there could be male feminists. Suddenly, they were like, Absolutely. How can you be a male feminist? What, you're trying to crush your own kind? It's mm -hmm. like, my kind is humankind. <laughs> so, Absolutely. And, and learners, they get really shocked, for instance, that I shared the that 130 million girls do not have access and then somebody in the chat box asked oh where are these numbers from these numbers are worldwide we do have some research to back us up so then we're going to be sharing with you all um so then it's a lot isn't it it's, it's so they get shocked it's yes you know, it's, it's like the population of england and spain put together imagining if all of those people so you think about all of those millions of people that don't have the opportunity to go to school it's just absolutely yes it's horrendous it's horrific which is why i think that this this mm -hmm. day is such an important day to bring these ideas to to people's attention and you know again like like other days it should be something that we talk about all the time but what we're doing now it's september 
you've got six months to plan this into your classes, everybody. So yes. even if mm-hmm. you've got exams coming up, if you write it, grab your calendar down now, put in what you're going to do on the 8th of, of March, and you can build up to it. You, know, you that your that can be your special day, but you can add in bits and pieces every now and again. These incredible photos throughout history of you know maybe show a photo of the first woman in space or um, mm-hmm. other different female change makers, and make sure you emphasize that because far too often history yes. looks at men who have made a difference. When let's be honest, women have made as much of a difference. So we need to focus on those brilliant role models for both boys and girls something I saw recently was amazing after the the women won the world cup the 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 lady who scored the winner Carmona Olga Carmona is from Seville and I saw a little boy must have been seven or eight years old with Carmona on the back of his shirt and I just thought yes this is good this is what we need absolutely yes Harry and Harry we've got another day don't we we do. Does anyone remember what this day is? Some people call it Harry's Christmas. Mm. Mm. <laughs> ah, they do know. They do they know. know. They know, don't they? They, they do. know you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So when it gets to around the, you know, just before the 22nd of April, I like to think of myself as as Mariah Carey at Christmas or Michael Bublé at Christmas. And around this time is suddenly when, you know, we start seeing more environmentalists come to the fore. And of course, I love Earth Day. I think it's brilliant. Again, it should be every day, 100 percent. It really should be every single day. Um, But let's jump over to Earth Day. There's a lovely image of Earth Day on April the 22nd. And, well, this is this is quite a tricky one for me because I, I was asked to come up with a couple of ideas for Earth Day. I was like, a couple? Only a couple? Like, these sleeves might be short, but I've got so many ideas up here. And if anybody noticed, this is a different shirt to the one we started with. Yes, I didn't want to mention that, but I think you were trying to match the color palette from your picture. Were you you trying to? I had Uh, to make sure it was it was the same. That was the thing. Yes, somebody in the chat noticed as well. Alien, yay! Fantastic. Yeah, there is a different shirt. Yeah, I did. I'm very quick at changing shirts. But anyway, back to Earth Day. Um, and so a couple of the ideas that I like to think about. Um, first of all, uh, is Earth Day superheroes. Now, this wasn't my idea. This is an idea that came from changemakersworld.live. Uh, Daria, if you could put that link in the in the chat or, or, or wherever you might want to put it, that would be wonderful. Um, if you can drop it in there. Look at that. Daria, she's, she's a machine. Um, she's dropped it in there. And I've even put in a quick link as well to some other ideas about these days made by another colleague of ours, Margarita. So feel free to check that out. This Earth Day superheroes idea came in from a young learners group in Georgia. Thank you very much. And it's it's all about creating superheroes for Earth Day. So what I like to do is come up with a name for the superhero, come up with their superpower, draw them, create them, um, give them a catchphrase like planet power or something like that. We can create our superheroes and then we can use them throughout the year. We can use them on the different days. We can create a different comic for different days that our superhero can appear. We can have crossovers. We can have multiverses. We can use these superheroes for absolutely whatever we want to. Um, We can use them wherever we want and we can use them whenever we want. And it's a great way of being creative. If you want to know more about these, please come along to this live lesson. I don't know if Daria has the registration link, but it is available next Thursday. Um, And we're talking about, it's a story of the climate crisis or a a story for climate crisis as well. And we're going to be looking at lots of different ways to use creative writing in our classes, including this wonderful idea. So that's one thing for Earth Day. Maybe build your characters before Earth Day. And then when it gets to Earth Day, You can use them and build some different ideas, some different comics, some wonderful different things. World Water Day, by the way, uh, Nato, Nato, is the 22nd of March. So uh, you'll be able to see that later. And don't you worry, uh, we will be talking about that in our afterspiel. I love it because it's like my name and it's near my birthday. 
The other idea that I've got, now this is one I am obsessed with. I'm absolutely obsessed with upcycled art. Now, again, this is an image from another um, contribution. I almost said project there. Another contribution from changemakersworld.live, which as I mentioned, is a hub where you can share all the wonderful things your students are doing to make a difference in the world as global citizens, uh, with DEI and also with sustainability and upcycled art. You can use it as protest art or simply like Derek Gorsder has done. You can use it um, as a way to raise awareness of how you can use items again. Um, as I mentioned, you can turn, you can use protest art as well. You can look at these different things. Loads of that over on Renewable English. Or as I did for my last class last year, we talked about animals in our final unit. We talked about some of the problems animals were facing. And then the students who were between 10 and 12 created these different animals in their groups. They brought in the plastic from their houses. So you're saving money on art supplies as well. Your school will be very happy. It showed the students the, the worth of plastic. It showed the students the power of plastic as well. You can also look at how much water and oil it takes to create this plastic. So then just throw it away or recycle it. Let's upcycle instead. Let's look at some fun things we can do with it. And these wonderful creative ideas came directly from the students. You know, you've got you've got penguins there who are covered in plastic and crying. It's like it's amazing and tragic at the same time. And then we've got a turtle that has the earth drawn on its back. And within that, there's lots of different microplastics in the ocean and plastic everywhere, basically. So these are super fun, super simple ideas of how you can use it in class. And you can do this with upcycled art. You can make toys from different things. Basically, stop buying art supplies. Forget art supplies. They're unnecessary. Jump in there and do this. If you need more ideas, you can absolutely check out Renewable English. It's, I've got some different reels over there on Instagram. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop the link here in the chat. I'm also I'm gonna and while I'm at it, I'm gonna I'm gonna chuck in my wonderful colleagues Instagram as well. So jump over there and, and sign up to those for loads of ideas. So upcycled art, as I say, and upcycling is just a great way to change the mindsets of our student, see the value of plastic, and you know, continue trying to make a difference in that way as well. Lovely ideas, Harry. Love that. Love that. You know, um, last actually in April, I was in London and then I joined the celebrations for the Earth Day. It was absolutely amazing. I was so surprised because I thought it was just a protest. But no, people there, they talk to you. There are many activities for kids. So then don't be afraid of taking your kids to these celebrations. So there are lots for them to do. I love that. It was my first time in the Earth Day in London. So then I had so much fun. It's great. It's just a wonderful way of people coming together and coming up with solutions and ideas of what they can do to make a difference in the world. Um, and that, are our, they are our five days. But there are more days. There are more days. Before we do a quick rundown of them, I do very quickly want to share something with you if I can find it, but maybe Please just do. It. Okay, I'm just trying to see where I've left it now. I've, I've hidden it because I'm silly. I hope I didn't close it. I What's might. the mystery? Why oh. were you hiding? <laughs> Who knows? Ah, I do have it. I do have it. Yes. yes. Harry still has it. So it's basically before we run through some of our favorite days, uh, I just I would love to very quickly just share some things that I hope you can take away from today. Um, so I'm just gonna very quickly share my screen with you. Um, it's over there. So I hope that from today, I want you to write in the chat box while we're talking about our favorite things, one thing that you took away from today's session. I also want to know if there are any days that you would like to teach in your class. And if you want any ideas, please feel free to get in touch with us. We are very, Get in touchable. That's not a word. <laughs> Very approachable. <laughs> there you go. Thanks for that. Um, and yeah, do get in touch um, and talk to us about the today's session or about advancing uh, futures. Uh, and yeah, please do feel free to get in touch. I'm going to drop my email address into the chat box as well. 
Um, I'm may, uh, or you can just grab us on Instagram as well. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to chat and talk at the same time. It always means I'm going to make a spelling <laughs> mistake. I'm so good at making spelling mistakes. So there we go. Anything you need, yeah. please feel free to get in touch. I meant to yes. put my QR code on there, but completely forgot. Um, oh, so have I, yes. I'll leave time. my mail as well. Talk to us if you need any help. We are just an email away. Exactly. Now, Tamires. Yeah. It, here in Europe, the school year is about to start. Um, it is. So it's, it's a new year as it goes. So I'd like to look at a few different days that, that you like to talk about. Um, that I like to talk about, and I'm not going to steal yours, so I'm going to let you go first this Please time. Please do. No, no, not a problem. So then uh, the 21st of September is International Day of Peace. So I guess it's a great chance for us to revisit peace and then how to talk to our learners more kindly and then to spread love as well. <laughs> Absolutely great idea. Wonderful. It, also, there's that song by Earth, Wind and Fire. Do you remember the 21st, 21st night of September. Night of September. There you see. So you can also play yeah. that in class. Um, exactly. <laughs> I, I like, I'm going to talk, I'm going to jump to October. Um, I love October. There are some great days. Actually, no, I'm going to do the, the end of September. Sorry. The International Day of Awareness of Food Loss and Waste. I think that's a great day that we can use because food waste is the easiest way for us to make an impact on the planet. What we eat and what we don't eat are two things that we really need to think about. So it's not just about eating less animals. That yes. is going to help. But don't waste. Don't waste your food. Don't waste your food. Come on. One pro tip for that. If you've got kids, get them to serve themselves. Don't fill their food, their plate with food and then say you have to eat it. Oh, get them great. to put on their plate what they want. Absolutely. And speaking of food, do you know, do you know when my birthday is? I do. I bet they don't know. Oh, well, my birthday is on the 16th of October. Please send me a card. Please, please do. And guess what? The 16th of October is the World Food Day. So you can pick up some of Harry's ideas, connect to October, send me a gift. Yeah. Well, what else can you get from that? Well, I, what else I, can love, you ask? <laughs> I love food. And one of the great things so I do I. with my students, one of the lovely projects is who can make the most colorful meal? Um, so I get them to make different salads. Um, obviously, some of them might just pour some jelly beans into a bowl and say, look, how <laughs> look blue flavor. Um, it's um, okay. <laughs> yeah, there are so many. Others. So I'm going to jump now. I'm going to have a look at the da, 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 in the day 16th of november is the international day for tolerance so i think oh, that's a really cool. great idea um for encouraging tolerance and peace if my dog starts barking in a minute by the way it's because someone's <laughs> the so don't worry about that maybe my yes. daughter could get up and answer the door who knows exactly um, well any more days Oh, there oh, on December we do have in December we have Human Rights Day, which is the 10th of December. That's pretty interesting as well. Yeah, well, so many dates, so many. Yeah, 24th months. of January, Day for Education. Very important when we talk about um oh, it's Olga's birthday, is it? Very good. Happy birthday. Oh, um, Olga. Hey. The, the 24th of January Day of Education, as we talked about before, making yeah. education available for everybody. Zero discrimination day could be linked to tolerant, uh, like day of tolerance mm -hmm. as well. So, um, and then I'm going to jump to March. I love March. We talked about it before. Um, very good, Lucas. Absolutely, 100%. Yes. We've got that one, the 28th of June. Wonderful day. Um, yeah, the 22nd of March is World Water Day. Do you have any days in March that you like? Well, besides the Women's Day, there's something pretty interesting about the French Language Day. I guess that is a nice way for us to raise awareness of other languages and then how students consume culture. So why not? Why not? And then there are so many more days. And the best thing about all of these wonderful days is you're going to get them all in a calendar like next week. How cool exactly. is that? Yes, that's amazing. And then I know that some of our participants are asking about the Teacher's Day 
I don't have to mention that, right? That's my favorite day because, well, it's in the very same no month of my birthday and World Food Day. So this is the one that it's like an extra, I would say. <laughs> so, Amazing, exactly. But yeah, okay. National Children's Day, there's all of these different days and they're great to use. Think ahead now because we're planning our classes for the future. Think ahead now and do it now rather than waiting till the last minute. And then you're like, oh, I don't have time anymore. Put it in the calendar now and it's ready to go. And there are so many resources that are ready for you, ready to go straight away. Um, I think I've I think I've said enough. Yeah, so too. Well, they're well, this participants are just amazing, right? So I guess that you're getting so much from today's uh, webinar. Thank you so much for being with us.